I am Kevin Trudeau with Dr. Roger Callahan. I want to personally congratulate you on your decision to purchase this program, the Callahan Techniques Thought Field Therapy, and making the first step you need to make to improve the quality of your life in virtually any area of psychological disturbance, whether it be addiction, phobia, depression, love pain, anything whatsoever. Now on this tape, we're going to be sharing with you how the techniques were developed, why they work. We'll actually show you some clips of Dr. Callahan on some of the various talk shows he's been on, so you can see the techniques in action. And then we'll show you and teach you the simple, systematic, step-by-step -step procedure that you can apply at home, right where you are, right now, to eliminate the problems that you have. So I think you're in for an exciting time. Dr. Roger Callahan, thanks for being here. I first want to start with sharing with us about your background. Yeah. I know you're a clinical psychologist and uh, studied at uh, Syracuse. Right. University of Michigan for undergraduate and Syracuse University where I got my degree and my PhD in clinical psychology. Uh -huh. And you've been practicing as a clinical psychologist. Oh, yeah, since I started t treating people back in the early 50s. And you've treated thousands of, of Thousands people. of people. And I've, I, my whole career, I went into this field because I was interested in psychological problems. I suffered from some phobias personally. And I wanted to find out the answers because I was really puzzled. Even as a child, I wondered, what, what causes this? Because I knew I shouldn't be afraid, and yet I was. Right. And uh, so I went into psychology. I thought all the answers were known. I found that they didn't know. Right. <laughs> they really didn't know. And uh, the treatments that uh, I was taught I, uh, uh, just weren't as efficient as I would like them to be. So throughout my whole career, I've always been looking and hoping to find something that would work better. Mm -hmm. Fifteen years ago, I myself made some discoveries that just exceeded my wildest fantasies. I was treating, I'll give you an example. I was treating this patient, Mary. She was my first treatment. She had a terrible fear of water. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, she couldn't think of water. She couldn't even watch water on television without getting just ill, sick to her stomach. And when it rained, she was in terror. And I was using everything I had been taught. I was using cognitive therapy, behavioral therapy, systematic desensitization. I was a pioneer in clinical hypnosis. I was trying that. I was trying anything. Mm -hmm. And after a year and a half of work, we got her to the point that she could sit by the pool. Uh, and she couldn't still look at the water. She had to look up. But she was sitting, and we got her to the point where we got her, gradually got her closer to the pool after a year and a half, got her to sit in the pool. But after every treatment, she felt terrible. She had a splitting headache, and she was suffering misery. All, all the time she was sitting on that pool, she was in, in just miserable, terrible. Mm -hmm. And I tried something that I was just beginning to explore. And I asked her to tap on her eye. And she looked at me after she did that. She says, it's gone. We were in the house mm -hmm. in my place in Bel Air. She says, it's gone. I said, what's gone? Because I wasn't expecting anything. I didn't right. even know it was happening. She says, it's gone. She, I said, what? She said, that horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach when I think of water is completely gone. Now, I used to have to drag this poor woman down to the pool for her exposure sessions. Right. And... Uh, Although she could do it after a year and a half, she was still absolutely miserable. And she ran to the pool. And in fact, it frightened me, Kevin, because I didn't know what the hell happened. You know, she, there she is running toward the pool. And I holler, Mary, stop, look out. Because <laughs> I was really scared. And she stopped and laughed, turned around and laughed at me. Dr. Callahan, she says, don't worry. I know I don't know how to swim. I'm not going to jump in that pool. And that told me something very, very important right then and there. At that moment, I learned that the, the treatment, although it seemed to cure the problem, and it did, uh, nevertheless, didn't make her stupid. Mm -hmm. And that's an important distinction because you don't know until you, that happens what's going to evolve. From now, it. this treatment is rapid, it's quick, and we're yeah. going to be teaching the people in just a few minutes right. how to apply it to themselves. That's right. But you've experienced this not only, I believe I was told that you've treated more uh, people with psychological disturbances yeah. than any other person in history. That's right. And the reason for that is that I've always been interested in efficient procedures, try to find faster ways. But now that we can often, very often, not always, but often cure problems within minutes, it's allowed me to treat many more people than any other psychologist in history. I've also been in practice for more, more years than most <laughs> psychologists in history. And you've had a lot of results on, on TV shows yeah. and radio shows. That's treating skeptical strangers, Kevin. Right. And that's important because that tests whether it's a placebo or suggestion effect, and it isn't. It's not at all. So we've treated skeptical strangers on, I've treated hundreds, uh, it runs in the thousands now, in public, in front of everybody, where I can fail. And when I fail, I look like a bum, of course. Right. And that can happen. 
but for the most part, we had a very, very high success rate, often better than 90%. Now explain to us exactly what happens when, you, when we do the treatment. I know you have a little something you can just I have demonstrate some, yes. for us. Uh, first I made the discoveries. Then I had to figure out what's going on because nothing in conventional psychology, nothing I'd ever heard about, read, or studied could explain, could have predicted what happened, right. nor could it explain what happened. So what I noticed first of all about these treatments is the person progressed, let's say we use a 10-point scale, right. and they started at a 10 or a 9, 8, 9, or 10, the therapy within, uh, within minutes, they would progress from a 10 down to a 6, down to a 4, down to a 1, where the problem's completely gone. Right. Now that rate of progress within minutes is just baffling, and the only thing I could think of in science that was related is it seemed to be like quantum jumps. Mm. You'd expect maybe that, that after a month you might get someone down from a, from a 10 down to a 9.85, and then after two more months down to a 9.85. A2, that right. kind of, but this, this is not at all how it happens. So actually I started studying quantum theory about five years ago when I felt that might have some answers for me. And uh, it does indeed. It's, it does seem as if somehow we're getting quantum effects at the quantum level of uh, existence. And um, I, have, I call it thought field therapy now because if you'll notice on one of the clips we're going to show, mm -hmm. you'll notice that the, I, I'm treating a woman, this was on a national show called Evening Magazine, and I was treating this woman who had a horrible fear of driving. She right. couldn't drive on freeways or go over bridges, and for 18 years, and she lived in Baltimore, by the way, where they have loads of bridges, mm -hmm. and so she was severely handicapped by this. And uh, a friend of hers asked me to, they arranged to have her on this TV show. Now, I didn't know if I'm going to help her or not, but it's instructive to observe what happens. I asked her, first of all, to think of driving on a bridge, and you'll notice that she breaks down. Mm -hmm. Now, the thinking about the problem as you will be in procedure is the first step. You think about the problem, and you'll see that she gets extremely upset. And I think if we think of the thought field, let's just say this is a thought field, this rubber band with paper clips on it right. is a thought field. And the paper clips represent what I call perturbations in the thought field. She tunes in this perturbed thought field, and she gets very, very upset. As the therapy progresses, we remove the perturbations from the thought field. Mm -hmm. And so as you're doing the therapy, this is the therapy. So first thing we do is we get the thought field up. We, we, we bring it into bring the it up person, first. right? They tune it in. They, they tune think it about in. it. Right. Then, you, then we do the therapy, which just takes a few Take, seconds. Right. And as you're doing the therapy, you're removing paper clips from a rib. <laughs> <laughs> you're removing what I call the perturbations. Now, today, most people know about the chemical theory, say right. depression. Almost everybody reads about that and knows about that. And that's a fact. There's chemical changes with psychological problems. When a person experiences any intense emotion, there's chemical changes going through the, right. the whole body and the brain. But uh, we're not doing anything. We're not putting chemistry into the body when we do this. We're removing the perturbations. Now, this is in a thought field, right. and they're very subtle. And that's what our treatments are subtle, too. But yet, it has this profound effect. And when you remove the perturbations, you don't get those chemical problems. So this, is a, it, this treatment has the, the, the result is instantaneous, right. it, and it's quick. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens. Well, and it gets at the fundamental cause of all disturbed emotions. Right, which is in the thought field It's in the level. field, yes. It's a so field the thought phenomenon. field, when you have the perturbations, that's what initially causes the chemical problems in, in the brain. That's right. When you change this, you don't get all the nervous system uh, hormonal reactions and chemical changes. So we're not dealing with the symptoms. No, the, we're the chemical at the reactions. What you're telling me are, are symptoms. Yeah. They're not the cause. You're handling what causes those chemical imbalances. Exactly. That's what we're doing. Which makes the person. Now let me ask you this question. People watching this, I'm c certain a lot of them will be very skeptical. Right. Uh, they may not believe that it'll work. I know that I treated people that said this will not work on me, yeah. and then after we treated them, boom, they have the desired result. Right. Even though they they, they were convinced it will not work. Right. What about that? Well, not only do they not have to believe in it, uh, most people do not believe in it. And I think that's understandable, and, and there's no reason why they should believe in it if they never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. Because it happens to be the most powerful treatment I've ever seen. I've never seen anything else come close to the power of this treatment. But the point is, it doesn't make any difference whether they believe in it or not. Now, to show that it's not suggestion, in other words, suggestion works by somebody believing in something, right. and then they, they seem to get improvements. Now. I've been a psychologist, as I said, for, for over four decades now, 
and I found suggestion, placebo, and hypnosis to be very poor. You can't count on them. Uh, they just don't work very well. And sometimes people think it's distraction. That doesn't work very well. And so uh, we know now that that's not, the ca that's not any way related to our treatment because we have what we call the apex problem. Mm -hmm. Now, the apex problem is when we have treated somebody successfully, they don't hesitate in reporting their problem's gone, but they have trouble believing that the treatment did it. So even after successful treatment, many people who do this don't believe that it was the treatment. Right. But it is the treatment, and it can be demonstrated. And we, I would never go on television shows or radio shows trying to treat skeptical strangers if I was relying on something like hypnosis or suggestion, which is notoriously poor. Now, before we go to the clips, one more question is, will it work for every single person? No, no, it won't work for every single person. Uh, we wish that it would. I mean, that is what we have here will not work for every single person. I don't think any treatment ever will work for every single person. Some people have more complicated problems. Some people are not helped by this simple procedure, which we found will help most people. The majority. But the vast majority, this will have a The vast majority will be helped on. instantly. And if they follow the directions and so forth, they will experience that. So they don't have to believe in it. Believe in it, though, after you've experienced it, then believe in it. Okay. Yeah. And if it doesn't help you, we do have individual treatment programs, and we're training other doctors to do this. Uh, and uh, we now have a much higher success rate. When you work with an individual doctor who's been trained in our diagnostic techniques, for example, that boosts the success rate up because if this algorithm or recipe that we put on here doesn't work, you have a better chance with individual diagnosis. And then, of course, with our voice technology, that increases the success rate even higher. Let's right now to handle the problem that you need to handle. What I want to share with you now is a simple step-by-step -step procedure that you will apply any time you have an addictive urge. Now, the first thing I want to, you to understand is when do you apply this particular technique. This technique is fast, effective, and it works. The reason it works is it gets at the energy field level. Dr. Callahan's techniques now are called thought field therapy because we deal with the thought field. What you're going to do, first of all, is you need to think about your problem. Now, this particular technique is applied when you have the uncontrollable urge to do what you're trying to stop doing.